Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. Hello, uh, Tony. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is your host, Tony Cañas. Uh, and, and today I have with me, and of course, my, my French from high school is beyond rusty. So, Hughes Burton, yeah. did I get somewhat yeah. close to the pronunciation? In French, it's Hugues Bertin, but it's not, it's not pronounceable. It's impossible to, to, to say Hugues Bertin in English or in Spanish. Impossible. Hugues Bertin. Uh, I, I, a little, three years of high school French did a little bit for my pronunciation. Uh, I, 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 can, I can ask for a bathroom kind of thing. So, so Hugues is for, uh, I, I, I've got to say, you've lived in, in Chile 20 years with an unpronounceable name in Spanish. That, this must have been an adventure. Hugues uh, uh, is the CEO at uh, Digital Insurance LATAM, uh, which is a consulting company. Uh, and he is a French actuary who's spent the last 20 years in South America. So, Hugh, uh, we always give the guests the, the chance to, to, to give kind of the elevator pitch for what their company does. So, so what does what what your consulting company do, do? Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Tony, for, for, for the invitation. So, Digital Insurance Latam is the first consulting firm with connection in the insurtech space in Latin America in order to propel the insurance sector in the next normal, that is a new normal right now. Okay, so, and uh, we are working with insurance company and huge broker in transformation and innovation. Okay, that is uh, the main uh, focus. And uh, we plug a lot of insurance solution uh, to our clients, carriers, traditional carriers or broker. And additionally, uh, I love to dedicate a lot of time uh, directly uh, for training, for example, because we, we train a, a lot of sea level in Latin America with my partner that the name is The Digital Insurer. Perhaps you know Hugh Terry mm -hmm. in Singapore. So we, we dedicate a special training for sea level in Latin America. Okay, that is our job. And other, th other things is to invest and to help HS Capital, that is an investment fund, to invest in insurance space. Okay. Okay. Per perfect. So, so uh, your, your own career we we're talking about be before we started recording. Very, very interesting. So, so an actuary by trade, yeah. and and then you you come to Latin America and end up working in the bank assurance space. Yeah. And end up being chief actuary, CFO, and digital transformation. Right. So, yeah. so that must have been an, an incredible role uh, doing doing yeah. all three functions. Yeah, that is quite, quite the, the, uh, in the in the BNP Paribas Cardiff space. That is quite common to to make chief actuary and CFO all together. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. not so, so so strange. But the, the 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 point is, it was in uh, twenty fourteen. My CEO said to me, "Hey guy, I would like to 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 you you, you make um, you 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 must put in charge the digital transformation of Cardiff." And in twenty fourteen. Nobody knows anything, and myself in my it was my case about digital transformation in insurance. So uh, we begin with a, a, a fully blank page, and uh, we, we we bought a very strong plan uh, about culture, about front end, back end, in order to transform the the the, the company. Okay, uh, so so insurance and insure tech in, in Latin America. I I I'm a weird case. I grew up in Costa Rica. I came to the U.S. when I was 19. I've been here my entire career. So, so, so I have very little knowledge of, of insurance in, in Latin America. I remember when I was growing up uh, in Costa Rica, there was a single insurance company owned by the government called INS. Uh, and, and now there's a little bit of competition. But, but kind of my biggest exposure to that market was uh, I spoke at, at the Reactions Conference in, in Miami back in 2017, uh, and uh, it's a reinsurance conference. And, and I learned by spending the whole day in, in that conference that Latin America reinsures 90, I can't remember the exact number, but something like 98% of, of, of the risk, right? So, so very little premium stays in Latin America. I don't know if that has changed, but I'm, I'm assuming that, that, that it hasn't. Because, uh, and then the reason that they gave is because there's just not that much capital in, in Latin America. So, so what? 
what, what, what does the insurance world, not, not insure tech yet, let's talk about insurance first. What, what does the insur insurance world in Latin America look like? Okay, great. Um, that is very interesting because in the case of Latin America, uh, always we, 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 we analyze Latin America like a, a, a big place uh, to, to play. But Central every, America and South America are very different. But every country is so different. For example, I live uh, 15 years in, in Argentina, and now I cross the, the, the Ants Mountain, and I am living in, in Chile. And there are two countries very different. Really? Are very different. About insurance, that is totally different. For example, in Argentina, there is no life insurance space. I, I don't know what, I think 10% of life insurance. But in Chile... That is more like uh, 60, 40, I don't remember, but every country is very different. For example, in the case of Brazil, there are a lot of bank insurance sector like Chile, but uh, there are other places with very traditional channel. For example, in the case of Bolivia or Peru, uh, bank insurance is not very uh, developed. See? So every country is very different and as you mentioned about uh, the, 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 the job of the reinsurer, every country is so different. For example, in the case of Uruguay, Uruguay that is a very small country. Uh, the level of uh, retained premium is uh, very low. But in other countries, the level of retained premium is very high. In the case, for example, in the case of Argentina. So every country is very different. But basically, in a nutshell, um, I can say to you that Latin America is about two or three years late in the development of the country if you compare with Europe or with US, okay? Okay, uh, very interesting that, that Chile and, and Argentina would be that different. Uh, so from, from my perspective, being from Central America, yeah, Central America and South America are very different from each other. Uh, generally, South America is much more developed, especially Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, uh, and and having having I I I did visit uh, those three countries uh, and Paraguay, which is very very different. But 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 Ar Argentina, Chile, and, and Uruguay feel very European, feel very developed for Latin America, uh, yeah. compared to the rest of 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 the countries in Latin America that that, that I visited. Uh, so, so it's very interesting that 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 Chile and, and Argentina would be so different from from each other in, in the insurance aspect. Yeah, it's totally different. For example, in the case of Chile, uh, Chile was very famous for the development of pension plan and everything uh, related to the life insurance, life annuities. So it was very famous that Chile was uh, the, the 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 place to be. Uh, for example, I think that in the case of MetLife. I think that is uh, Chile, the third market in the world for MetLife. So very huge market uh, for, for, for MetLife in Chile. But for example, there is nothing about life insurance in Argentina. And, uh, they, and, and the, the, both countries are, are so close. So it's very strange. In the case of uh, Uruguay, Uruguay is quite the same than uh, if you compare with Argentina. But uh, Brazil is very different, and uh, Colombia is very different. Obvious, for sure, Mexico is very different. So, oh well, yeah, that, that that's yeah. radically far 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 away. And, and Brazil being Portuguese uh, uh, instead of, of Spanish. Okay. Uh, so so just before we start recording, you mentioned that that your your, your organization has has put together a. a uh, I, I don't know if I should call it a map of Latin American insurtex or a report on Latin American insurtex, and you documented 300 and what was it, 323 uh, 90, insurtex? 93, 393. 393. Okay, so yeah. so that that's a that's a large number. That's a, an impressively large number of of, of insurtex. Um, is it? Um, has that grown a lot in the last couple of years, or is it? Has it been like? five years that you've had you've had a, a huge number of, of insurtechs yeah great great question um if you compare uh insurtech space uh with the world that is uh, uh, uh the same things three or four years late if you compare with europe or with the us definitely but that is very interesting because there are a, 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 a huge growth about 22 percent by year of growth of insurtech 
Um, I, I, as you mentioned, uh, we, 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 we know that there are 393 insurtech in Latin America, uh, but uh, it represents about 7% of the total uh, worldwide insurtech, okay? But only 2% in the uh, funding uh, part. So basically, if, if I, I, I can make a, 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 a summary, there are a lot of insurtech quite uh, with a very good uh, growth rate, okay, 22% by year, that is great, but uh, with a very low funding level right now. So a large, in my opinion, uh, Latin America is a, a, a very uh, nice uh, blue ocean. There are a lot of opportunities, okay, uh, but very unmature uh, right now, okay? So lots of opportunities for, for, for the venture capital funds or for the investors. So, so for, for, for now, um, it, okay. So my experience with, with, yeah. with, with Latin America is, is that the, the way businesses are funded is very different from the US, right? In, 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 in the US, uh, businesses aim to, to, or large businesses aim to eventually go public and be publicly traded. Uh, in, in Latin America, it, there tends to be a, a domination uh, by, by, by conglomerates, by, by family-owned conglomerates that, that, that own businesses in, in, in a variety of, of different spaces. Uh, so, so for now, is, is, is it more that type of investment, like the, like the same family? Uh, is, is that what, what you're seeing a lot of in the, in the insurance space where not yet... Uh, corporate investment coming in? Yeah, until now, for example, there is no uh, insurance company to invest. Uh, the, the, the CVC model is not, uh, doesn't exist right now. For example, there is very few insurance company uh, that is investing in insurtech. Uh, there is a case of uh, Sula, Sula from Colombia or Consorcio from Chile, but there are very few insurance company to say, hey, right now, uh, it could be great in order to fund some uh, insurtech, okay? But we understand that right now, for example, uh, last year in 2021, uh, uh, the, the level of investment was $391 million. That is 50% of the total amount of, of uh, funding in, uh, 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 since 20 uh, since uh, for the last 10 years. So uh, basically in the last year, there are a, a, a very um, important change in Latin America. Uh, for example, the, the best uh, success story is Betterfly. That is a, the first insurtech unicorn uh, that born in, uh, in Chile. And um, I think that right now we, we, we will observe in the next uh, three or four years, a large amount of funding for uh, insurtech space in Latin America, okay? So we, we, we estimate that we can reach uh, the, the amount of $1.5 billion of investment in Latin America for the, last, for the next three or four years. Oh, so, so you're expecting it to, to about triple, a little more than, than, than triple. That, yeah. That's fantastic. And, and uh, out of those 390, some I can't remember, 393 I think. Yeah. Um, is, is it a lot? Uh, are are they specifically going 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 after the distribution part of insurance? Are they are they specifically uh, uh, trying to become insurance companies themselves, or 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 are they building tools for insurance companies, or is it a wide variety of of, of things that they're trying to do? Yeah, that is very, your question is very great because when we, we analyze the insurance, uh, insurtech space, we, we separate the insurtech in three kinds of insurtech. The first one is new business model. So it's about, I don't remember the number, but about 12% of insurtech are dedicated to new business model. Okay. For example, for example uh, MBDD insurance, uh, for example, telematics. Uh, some kind of uh, 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 of innovating insurtech. By the way, in the case of uh, Brazil, there exist uh, 30 insurtech that are working in a sandbox 
dedicated by uh, and, and covered by uh, by the SUSEP. The SUSEP is the authority of uh, control uh, in Brazil, and they invent a lot of business model that is very interesting. Okay, so 12% for new business model, and after what there is uh, 40. I think that is 42% dedicated to for distribution okay that is mga digital broker aggregators something else okay uh, and in this space of distribution half is from uh, is a classical a traditional broker uh, that is investing in technology so from traditional broker to insurtech and 50 percent is fully insurtech okay and the last part that is about uh, 45% are insurtech dedicated to the value chain of insurance, insurer of broker, okay? For example, a thematic solution dedicated to uh, fleet model, um, claims management, uh, fraud detection, uh, digital platform and something else. So, so a lot of it is distribution uh yeah 40 40 45 percent yeah, yeah and, and that seems to reflect kind of how it started in, in in the states where 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 a lot of the first place where where distribution uh ma ma makes makes per makes perfect sense um what 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 are the challenges that that the insure techs in latin america have is is it is it mostly the funding piece, or is it hard to find talent, or or are are, are the insurance companies that, that that they're trying to to partner with even more conservative than, than in the U.S. or what 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 are the challenges? Great, I think that the 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 the, the challenges are um, first in Latin America there are a lot of blue ocean, for example, very low level of uh, pet insurance very low level about SME insurance, very low level about everything. They are very, uh, uh, there are a lot of blue ocean in Latin America first. Okay, second, talent exists, okay? Talent in Argentina, in Brazil, in Chile, in Colombia, there are a lot of, in Mexico, a lot of talents, okay, to, to, to make the change. Um, I think that first, um, InsurTech is not the first uh, focus for entrepreneurs. The entrepreneur like more to work in food tech, act tech, fintech, but insure tech is not very glamour, is not very sexy. So that is a, the, the first challenge. So to, to understand that there are a lot of opportunities. So to communicate about that first. The second one is um, funding. Definitely, until now, the level of funding is very low, 2% in the worldwide, worldwide world, but valuation in uh, insure tech is very low in Latin America if you compare with Israel, that I know very well, of the, if you compare with US. In US, valuation are, wow, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a topic. So for with the PowerPoint, uh, the guy asked $20 million without with any problem, okay? So in US, valuation is, is, is a topic. So. Uh, the second point is funding, um, and I think that the, the, the third point is the capability for insurtech to create a good market in one country and to move rapidly in other markets. Okay? For example, in the case of Chile, it's very important that Chilean insurtech can, can go rapidly to Peru, to Colombia, to Mexico, and to go afterwards uh, to, uh, to, to, to US, okay? So I think that, uh, for example, in the case of Spain and, and Portugal, I think that uh, we will observe a very strong bridge between Iberian, so uh, Spain, Spain and, and Portugal with Latin America. So uh, in my opinion, there are three challenges. Uh, the first one is to make insurance glamour, that is the first point. The second point is to uh, to to capture more funding, uh, and the third is to to the capacity for insure tech entrepreneur to move forward rapidly from a country to other one. It's it's very interesting that that, that there's so much blue ocean, uh, 
because the, there are areas of the world where, where part of the challenge with, with rolling out insurance products is that there's no culture of, of, of insurance, right? The, uh, generally in more collectivist societies, you, you're kind of expected to, to you, your, your family will back you up, your community will, will back you, you up, everybody will get together when something happens and help you rebuild rather than insure it, right? In my experience of Latin America, Latin America, in, in, getting insurance is, is, is common. It's a common part of the culture. Uh, we, don't, we don't have the variety of products like, like pet insurance kind of thing. Uh, but I, I would think that it's, it's not that hard uh, to convince people to, 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 to buy pro products like that, given that, that like auto or motor, motor insurance and home insurance are, are pretty normal, right? Um, so so I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that, that it, it's more just, it, it hasn't advanced to, to, that, to that point, but, but uh, it, it, if, if, if I were running a, an, an investment firm, I, I, I would think it makes sense to, to, to throw money at Latin American InsurTech uh, because the combination of Blue Ocean with uh, a culture that does appreciate insurance, where we don't have to sell the idea of insurance. Yes, and I, and I think, you know, to go in your sense, so it depends on country. There are countries with more mature knowledge about insurance, other countries with, with very low level of maturity about insurance. Um, but I think that until now, uh, VC fund in the world, from in US, in Asia, are not looking uh, Latin America because Latin America is other, other uh, culture, other language, so I, I think that until now is not the case. But, but uh, when you observe the case of, for example, New Bank in Brazil, New Bank is the first uh, neo bank in the world. Huh? Forty million clients in the world, okay, with SoftBank, with Tencent as a VC fund. So there are a lot of uh, hard people to 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 bet on that. Um, Mercado Libre, that is the eBay of Latin America, uh, I think that has about 80 million of, of clients. So there are very huge um, super app, very huge big tech player in Latin America. And uh, I think that we can observe a, 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 a big player in the short tech space, perhaps will be a better fly, huh? better fly in two years. Uh, fund uh, 200 million dollars and uh, are doing a very great job uh, to shake the market in every uh, country in Latin America. So great, great interesting to, to, to look at. Um, one, one last question. Um, as you look into the future uh, for Latin American InsurTech, are, are you expecting that, that they will significantly expand into serving the, the, the US market, kind of like the, these Israelis. It's incredible. There's so many insure techs yeah. that, that, that came from Israel and, and is still part of the operation, whether it's the engineers or whatever are still in Israel that are very, very big here, here in, the, in the US. Can we expect to see that from Latin America or, or are they likely to, to, uh, to uh, proof of concept in Latin America and then expand to other developing countries that, that, are, that are more similar? So first, I think that there exists a, a natural bridge between Latin America and Spain and, and Portugal, but until, until now is not the case. So it's only a, a, a possible trend, but it's not exist right now. Uh, the second point is uh, to make a, a Latin insurtech successful, you must go to Mexico, or to Brazil first. And the, the point is, it's very difficult to go to Brazil right now because uh, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese. Um, the market is typically an internal market that is very different. Uh, <coughs> sorry, it's a different culture. So uh, the, 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 the main insurance go directly to Mexico before to go to US. Yeah, so Mexico is the, the only market that's large enough. Yeah, and but there are some insurtech like uh, Lisa Insurtech from Chile, Joycar from Chile that are right now in US because US is definitely the place to be to, 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 
to, to, to grow in value, evaluation, to grow in value, and to be sure that your model is successful. So uh, um, in a nutshell, I think that the place to be for Latam InsureTech is US. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for, for your time. This was very interesting. I definitely learned a lot ab about insurance and, reins and, and, and insure tech in, in, in Latin America. Uh, th thank you very much for, for, for your time. So thank you, Tony. So a pleasure to be with you and uh, happy to, to, to chat with your audience and follow, follow, follow me in uh, LinkedIn because if you are interested in uh, Latin America insure tech, I, I publish a lot of things about that. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for the invitation and uh, and uh, a pleasure to meet you. Thank In you. Person.